and welcome to Newton Gate Academy where we make your dreams come true. And today's video is going to be specially for class 7 champs. The subject that we are going to discuss today is geography and the chapter under geography would be the weathering and erosion processes. So we are going to divide today's video into three parts and we are going to discuss the work of a river in its three different courses. Today's video will be the erosional depositional features of a river in its upper course and in the middle course and the lower course it will be discussed in the upcoming videos. So are you excited for the video? Then let's get started. So let's start with today's topic weathering and erosion. First let us see what is the meaning of weathering. Weathering means the breaking down or dissolving of rocks and minerals on the surface of the earth. Water, ice, acids, salt, plants, animals and changes in temperature are all agents of weathering. Weathering does not involve transport of rock material. So, here is a pictorial representation of weathering. If you can see, rocks are eroded and washed away by wind and water. And the broken down rock particles are called sediments. So look at this pictorial representation very carefully. Now let us see what is mass movement. Mass movement is the downhill movement of sediment that moves because of gravity. And common examples of mass movement are landslides. Now we will move on to the concept of erosion. Erosion means the combined action of transportation and breaking down of rocks. If the wind is dusty or water or glacial ice is muddy, erosion takes place. So you can see from the pictorial representation of what is actually the process of soil erosion. The next concept that we are going to discuss is denudation. Denudation means the exposing or laying bare of rock by erosive processes. Denudation takes place as a result of weathering, mass movement and erosion. So it is the combined action of all the three processes that is weathering, mass movement and erosion. Denudation causes a general lowering of relief that is the topography. Now we are going to discuss the action of running water. Since we are going to discuss the erosional, depositional and transportational functions of rivers. Water is mainly the most powerful agent of erosion. This point has to be noted. The earth's surface receives water mainly from rainfall. A part of it evaporates. Some of it seeps underground and is called groundwater. The water that remains on the surface of the earth is called surface water. A few more features are both surface water and ground water act as agents of erosion. Ground water creates interesting underground features such as caves. Surface landforms are altered by flowing surface water mainly rivers. Depending on the terrain, a river performs three types of functions, erosion, transportation and deposition. Now coming to the most important part of the video, that is the course of a river. The course of a river may be divided into three sections, the upper course, middle course and the lower course. And in today's video, as mentioned earlier, we are going to discuss only about the upper course. The middle course and the lower course will be discussed in the upcoming videos. Let us look at the features in the upper course. A river has its origin in the mountainous region. A part of the river lying in the mountains and hills is called upper course. The river flows down a steep slope at a great speed. The most important function of the river at this stage is erosion. The water's great velocity breaks away large fragments of rock. 
The fragments erode the bed of the river and to some extent its sides. The fragments carried by the river knock against each other and become rounded and small. Some features of the upper course are gorges and waterfalls, which we are going to discuss in details in the upcoming slide. Let's see what are gorges. We have a very beautiful picture of a gorge. So, when a river erodes the valley bed, the valley becomes deep and narrow with steep wall like sides, as you can see in the picture. Many Himalayan rivers flow through steep gorges. Large gorges are called canyons, example the Grand Canyon of the Colorado River. A valley looks like V when sides become less steep due to erosion by rainwater. It is also called V shaped valley. As you can see in the picture, the shape is of a V. This is the picture of a canyon. Can you guess the name of this great canyon? Do write it down in the comment section. Now coming to the next feature or the next landform formed in the upper course of a river. Most of you must have seen waterfalls and they look extremely majestic and beautiful. But do you know that how waterfalls are formed? Then let's know that. Waterfalls are formed when a river descends suddenly from a higher level to a lower level. Generally formed on the edge of hard rocks lying on relatively soft rocks. When soft rock area becomes deeper, it creates a sudden drop in the riverbed. Water rushes down vertically in the form of a waterfall. Angel Falls in Venezuela are the world's highest waterfalls. As you can see in the picture also, the hard rocks are layered on top of the soft rock where the erosion is rapid and the waterfall it falls from a very great height and the fall itself is called the plunge pool so this is an extremely majestic waterfall can you guess the name of this waterfall it looks so beautiful isn't it children so, this is the Angel Falls in Venezuela. Doesn't it look beautiful? So, over here we are going to stop for today. And in the next part, we are going to discuss about the middle course and the upper course. So, that's all for today's video. And I would request you all to please stay tuned for the upcoming parts as well. So if you like today's video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe our channel Newton Gate Academy and also do not forget to press the bell notification icon so that you can get updated with all our recent videos. Thank you so much for watching.